Let me begin by telling you a personal story. Uh, last September, I went to Malaysia for a series of lectures. Uh, I went to Malaysia six times in the nine, past nine years for conferences there. Because there are Muslim liberal groups, particularly an organization called the Islamic Renaissance Fund. So these are Islamic liberals. And by liberals, I don't mean secular, they're believing Muslims who want to re-articulate, reinterpret the faith in a more, more liberal, let's say, uh, outlook. And they had translated my book, Islam Without Extremes, A Muslim Case for Liberty, into Malay before. So the Malay edition is always, was already out there. They invited me to a few events, additional you know, conference. And I went from all the way from Malzi to Malaysia, which is the other end of the planet, basically. And uh, one of the panels were titled, does freedom of conscience open the floodgates of apostasy? And uh, I'm a defender of freedom of conscience as well as freedom of speech. And freedom, those freedom, freedom of speech, these are my big issues, right? Uh, and apostasy, though, is a concept that is interesting. Uh, I mean, it's seen as a crime, not in the Quran, but in classical jurisprudence in Islam. It's seen as a crime punishable by execution, by death penalty. And that is implemented in Saudi Arabia. I mean, apostasy means, you know, changing your religion or leaving your religion. Uh, apostasy is, in that sense, punished by death penalty in Iran, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Sudan, a few other places, like about 11 Muslim-majority countries. Not the majority, but 11 of them. And Malaysia is not one of those. And the Malaysians are moderate. They take pride in being moderate. So they don't execute apostates. They send them to a rehabilitation center. <laughs> so in my speech, which is like half an hour lecture, and it's available on the web, I, I argued against this. I said, well, we fellow, I mean, wouldn't Muslims to leave their religion? Yes, of course, we, should, we can advise and give some ideas, but, but if they still want to change it, it's their choice. You shouldn't send them to a rehabilitation center. Or and I brought the arguments from the Quran, from reinterpretation of jurisprudence. I refer to big Islamic authorities on this. They're progressive scholars, like Rashid Ganmushi from Tunisia. And at the end, I said, Religion is not something you can police, you know, it's something in the heart. And the event ended and everybody left and then five serious guys came and they said, we are the religion police. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, they showed me their identity cards and it really, their job description was religion enforcement officer. Wow. So they said they heard complaints about the talk, they will watch the video and they ask me questions and they said we will watch the video and let you know and they let me go that day. And I had my Malay food and you know, had good sleep and I woke up. The next day I woke up and it was on the national news that I was summoned to the religious police headquarters. It's called Javi, they're really in police. Uh, and my advisor suggested that I should better leave the country as soon as possible because these guys are uh, you know, I mean, they said we'll through with do uh, lawyers and so on and so forth. And I went to the airport, you know, I gave my passport and I was thinking, I'll have my sparkling water or something. Now. <laughs> and the police stopped me and they said, there's a problem. So they take me to the airport the police station. And I was waiting there. There were like, there were secular police who arrested me. And they were like, ah, you're famous. They were taking photos with me or something. So they didn't <laughs> but then the religion police came. They were more serious. And they said, we will going to read you your, to your face your arrest order. Are you going to cooperate? I said, like, do I have options? Yeah. I mean, I'll do that. <laughs> and they said, you have violated the law for teaching Islam without tawliya, which is permission from the authorities. And the, and the punishment for that is three years in jail. So we will be taken to a Sharia court tomorrow. And now we are going to arrest you for that. I was like, like I just came here for conference. I'm just going home. <laughs> Uh, it was chalk, and they, they, they took me from the airport, took me to a few different places, and ultimately they locked me that night at the religion police headquarters. That was the first time in my life, like I heard the Quran. I mean, I'm a Muslim, and it sounded threatening and you know oppressive because it was the religion police, you know, under under. You're hearing that. Anyway, next morning they took me to the Sharia court. They questioned me for two hours. At the end, they let me go. And I was able to leave the country 24 hours later. And I was like, phew, they let me go. I later learned that it was made possible through some diplomacy. You know, My father called Turkey's former president, not Erdogan, the one before that, 
And he's a good friend of the Malay Sultan, and the Malay so he called the Malay Sultan, and the Sultan told the court to release me. So I was like, go thanks to that, but yeah. it could have been longer.